Hey, what's going on everyone? I greatly appreciate you taking the time to click on my video. Hey, we're taking a look at some more crazy truck crashes. All right, let's go. Okay, traffic slowing down here. He's gonna merge, the truck was right behind him and he's getting on his brakes. Ah, uh, gotcha. I thought the truck that uh, he kind of cut off there was gonna get into his backside. Um, this happens all the time. Um, unfortunately, he was in the middle of passing, but yeah, this happens all the time where, you know, two cars are merging into the same lane at the same time. Not a big deal most of the time. However, he was in the middle of passing while this guy was moving in on him, so he couldn't do anything about it. Okay, we're at a big, big intersection. Oh my gosh. Obviously, they had the red light first, so they should have been stopping. These people are making their left-hand turn. You know, what's kind of concerning is these big um, giant RVs are technically considered a Class A vehicle. And if you are moving them for commerce, which means you're making money by moving them, whether you're transporting them to a customer or, you know, you're moving stuff inside of them, um, then it would be considered moving for commerce. These are considered Class A vehicles. Regular individuals, regular citizens do not have to have a CDL in order to operate these. So it's definitely advised if you're going to purchase one of these giant bus-like RVs or even a, a truck pulling a trailer, go out and get some practice driving it in a safe area, maybe take a lesson or something like that, um, look up uh, different CDL classes or even bus, buses uh, like for school and whatnot. There's plenty of programs all over the country um, just to get some experience and some, some training on how to drive these big vehicles. That's my little side note. It has nothing to do with the video. Sorry. Oh, that was close. I can't tell if there was contact. Okay, so we got a U-Haul here. Oh, sheets of ice come off. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Let me tell you a little story about that real quick. So I was, had a coworker that was driving over in Arkansas during the winter, and believe it or not, Arkansas does get quite a bit of snow. And he was driving behind another semi truck and a sheet of ice came off and went through his windshield and just scraped the front of his nose and ended up uh, giving him a nice little cut. I don't think it broke his nose, but those big sheets of ice can be very dangerous on the road. So be careful um, when you're driving in winter. Make sure that you can do your best to clear it off if possible. If not, I, I wouldn't recommend driving directly behind a semi truck during the winter because a lot of times there is big sheets of ice on the top that could come off come straight through your windshield and definitely uh, cause some harm okay vehicles merging over looks like traffic is slowing down ahead oh we blew a tire yeah that's another dangerous thing too is those uh we call them gators those shrapnel rubber that's in the road yeah cutting way too soon what is he doing ah I got it so he was doing kind of the right thing um, he was trying so basically what was happening is he was coming out to swing wide this way to cut back but what you got to be worried about is rear and swing you see how far his axles are that's the pivot point. Anything past that is going to be actually turning in the opposite direction of the way the truck is going. Okay, so what he should have done instead of coming out this way to swing back, which is a button hook turn, and, and that's pretty common. However, go straight as far as you can go um, and then start turning. That's the best way to do it. If you need a little bit more space, what you can do is go straight, turn your wheel, um, kind of like how he has it now to the passenger side back up pull forward back up pull forward similar to like a reverse action of what you're doing when you're backing into the spot originally just to give yourself a little bit more space and take your time coming out of a truck stop too could save you a big headache that's way too wide regardless I thought it actually he was turning this way Gosh, that's rough. Yep, 
Yeah, the best thing you could do is, uh, if you're getting hit like that, is to lay on your horn, let them know to stop. Okay, rainy, wet conditions. Okay, tanker cutting this guy off. Close call, but not the end of the world. Okay, we got following a truck. He's merging over here, jumping in on his blind side. This is why you do not pass on the blind side, which is the right side of the truck. Okay. So this guy that's driving in front here is setting up to back, it looks like. It looks like the one with the dash cam is in a parking spot. So my guess is he's going to get a rear end swing accident where he's setting up to back in one of these spots over here. And his tail swing is going to get him. Yep. Uh, not only that, but he was trying to do a U-turn. Oh, no, he's not. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's trying to do a U-turn in that tiny spot. And gets into the front of the truck. Yeah, this is one of those places that uh, you have to kind of uh, plan it out ahead of time. So, from the limited sight that you can see here in this video, there's not enough room to make a U-turn here. So I recommend to everybody, know before you go. And what that means is that you take a look on the Google Maps, talk to the shippers and receivers, plan out where you need to go, see other trucks that are on the Google image, the overhead, and see how much space is in there. Sometimes these places, especially in big cities, you actually have to back in from the road if you have any hopes of doing like a regular back. Here, most likely, the best spot would have been to do a uh, blindside back, unfortunately. Unless he were to, you know, go up further on and be able to turn around that way. But always, before you make your trip, look and see where you're going. Check out the reviews of the place. Are they going to take forever? Do you need to stop and get some breakfast before you show up? Know before you go. All right. Let's carry on. Oh, man. Oh, and he stopped too, buddy. Why'd you stop? Luckily, it was just a close call. Yeah, luckily, he was able to come to a stop. It seems like uh, he got around all right. This sped up a little bit. A little time lapse video. Oh, hood's popping up. What happened here? Did we blow a tire? Yeah, it looks like his steer tire probably blew. Alright, we're coming up to a spot where the lane merges in with each other. Let's take a step back here and see if we've seen any signs. Wait for it. I think I see it. What is that? Did you forget to look for the signs? Let's see which lane ends. So basically this sign says one of these lanes ends merge to the opposite one. No, we're not going to be able to make it out so we can find out who's at fault here. But nevertheless, there are signs all over the place that would have let one of these two know which one is which. And this trucker, if you get into the situation where the lane ends and you don't have enough room to merge... Um, you can drive on these shoulders a little bit just to give yourself a little bit more room. Um, I wouldn't recommend driving on the shoulder regularly, but nevertheless, use that as an out if you need to. Okay, and the truck's going to keep on going. Seems to me like the truck wasn't paying attention at all. Yeah, it doesn't even realize his mistake. You got another guy on the shoulder here. And this pickup truck or whatever vehicle this is, is probably a little messed up. Yep, get on the side, honk your horn, let them know what's going on. If nothing else fails, get their uh, DOT number and their company name. That's the best way to, uh, oh, and their truck number too, I'm sorry. That's the best way to call the company, let them know what happened, take pictures, take pictures, take pictures. If you ever get into any sort of accident, have way more than enough pictures and uh, video if you have it and you should be able to make sure that uh, the auditors can do their job and find out who's at fault all right we got 
couple of trucks here. I'm guessing we got another merging situation. Yep, jumped over a little bit on him. Not a big deal. Why are we even recording that? That That's crazy. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. He got a little scared. Close call, maybe, if you want to call it that. Yeah, he barely even touched the line. Good job on the red truck, though, for paying attention, noticing that he was drifting over a little bit and making the correction. Not a big deal at all, though. Now, this is a little bit bigger deal of uh, crossing the line. Is he going to overcorrect and get this way? Yep. Yeah, a little overcorrection there. Okay, we got an oversized load. Oh. Oh, man. A panel of the whatever he's carrying flew off. And that happens when you're doing 60, 70, 80 miles down the road. Stuff that's not properly secured is going to fly off like that. Um, I've had it to where I was hauling a job site forklift, basically. And they have the panels that fold up and fold down. One of them lifted up. Luckily, it didn't snap off or anything. And I was able to catch it looking in my mirror, pull off, get it tied down. But yeah, hauling a uh, flatbed, things like this can happen. I don't even think he noticed that happened so quick. I don't see anything missing, though. Now this guy's going to pull up and let him know. Okay, truck over here. Oh, blown tire. Was it a blown tire or did he just run over the, the med median there? Let's take a look. Go nice and slow here. Oh yeah, that was definitely a blown tire. You see the burst of air. Yep, and it's wobbling there. Yep, blown tire. Those things don't play around. That's a lot of air pressure that's shooting out. Okay, trying to merge over. Not really much of a reason to. Okay, so this is most likely a rookie driver that's afraid to be close to this wall here. And uh, is hogging this lane a little bit because he's scared to be close to that wall. And don't get me wrong, it is a little, a little frightening to be that close to something that could really mess up your day. Um, and if you're uncomfortable in that situation, I suggest moving over into the middle lane if you need to. And that's probably about the only time that I ever recommend being in the middle lane. Okay, we're at a stop sign. This looks to be a parked car. What happened? Okay, trying to figure out what happened here. Do we got a rear end swing situation or did the car that was coming this way cut this guy off? Nope. Oh, the back of his truck must have tagged. Yeah, these little box trucks still have that rear end swing because the pivot point is the tires, not the back. So basically anything that's past that point is going to move in the opposite direction of the way that it's turning. And that's called a rear end swing. Good job. Yeah, good job on this car to looking in the mirror. Good job, everybody, in this video. Let's take it back and uh, have another look. Okay, so he's coming up to a pretty quick, pretty quick stop. He's talking to his uh, lady in the passenger seat. He said he's doing fine. He's just looking in the rearview mirror for the the truck that's coming up behind him. Yep, good job on this truck for finding an out. If you're ever coming up to a backup, your best bet is to find an out if you can. Um, second option is braking, or you can do both at the same time. Good job on both of these people. If you're ever stopped, pay attention to your rear view mirror. If you need to, you can find the out as well. 
um, and, and pick up the pace, get on the gas pedal and get over here too. And this truck was right behind him, ready to clobber too. This whole video is perfection. Well done. Okay, so we got flashing lights up ahead. Whoa, sleepy, sleepy. And he's going real slow too. You could tell his foot already left off the gas and everything. Okay. Anybody want to take a guess at what's fixing to happen? You got any ideas? Have you watched enough of my videos to figure out what's going on here? Let's watch it. Oh. The truck that has the dash cam looks like it backed into something or it hit the brakes really hard um, and stopped. It looks like the trucker was slowing down too though. Oh, yeah. He either braked really hard or got into another vehicle that was behind him. Oh my gosh, I do not miss living up in Indiana dealing with this snow. Beep, 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 crunch. Yeah, I, I definitely think this, uh, this plow truck here is at fault. Stopping and then backing up right away. I mean, this guy kind of tried to run around him, but in his point of view, he expected him to keep going. All right, real quick before we wrap this video up here, um, trucker terms of the day. What do we call plow trucks? Think about it. It's quite a funny one. Um, on the CB radio, there's C CB lingo, and these are called a specific thing. A plow truck is called a specific thing. Leave it down in the comments what you think it's called. All right, y'all, that's it for this one. I thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Remember to subscribe down below um, and leave a comment. Let me know what uh, that kind of truck is called in CB lingo, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye.